Hi everyone, welcome once again to the Train Aid HQ. My name is Nick and in today's video we are going to take part within some first aid questions. So the learner Tom has just demonstrated his first aid practical skills. We looked at the primary survey, the secondary survey and also the recovery position. But now is the time to sit Tom down and ask him some questions regarding the first A practical. Okay, so we're just checking his knowledge um, as we have just seen his his skills. So I'm just going to invite Tom uh, to come in. Hi, Tom. How are you Hi doing? There. How yeah. Are you uh, please, please grab a seat. Yes. Okay. Um, so thank you first of all for uh, your first aid practical demonstration. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's just the two of us here, and we are going to to run to, uh, through um, some knowledge based first aid questions, okay? Yep. Now, all of the questions have been taken from the FAID standard, so that's the first aid industry body, okay? Um, are you all okay so far with uh, the, the task ahead? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Obviously, we've done the, done the practical bit, so just some, some more questions around those topics. Yeah, yeah of course. No problem. I will be asking um, each question and recording your results. Um, if unclear at all, uh, please ask and I will um, just rephrase and reiterate the, the question as well. Okay. Okay. Um, so first question is, um, how do you know if a casualty is unconscious? Um, so obviously with the, the sort of the primary survey bit, one of the main aims of that is to see if you get any sort of response um, from the casualty. Um, so obviously once you've checked for the danger as you see I was going down and you're going to talk you know nice and clear um, and loudly into the casualties here because um, obviously if someone's conscious most of the time you're going to get some sort of response um, and then you know it's nice sort of clear um, firm taps on the shoulders talking to them see if you can get any sort of response in that manner if someone is actually conscious um, they might not necessarily talk back to you but you'll get some sort of noise or that from them um, from actually talking to them and, and tapping them shoulders basically. Thank you Tom, that is, um, that is very well detailed, thank you. Uh, question two is how long uh, should you check breathing for? I think the, the standard I think is about 10 seconds, um, so obviously you want to give yourself enough time to, to, to work out that the casualty is breathing um, and you don't want to do it for too short a time because one obviously you might not determine fully whether they are breathing from sort of looking down their chest and sort of listening um, but also if the breathing was like maybe really labour or that you, you want to have a, a little bit of time to make sure um, that you know you, you've given it enough time um, to ensure that breathing is, is actually occurring. Okay uh, question three of six is what is the purpose of the recovery position? What is the purpose? Okay, so yes, yeah, so the, the reason you put people into a recovery position is because that's a, a more sensible position to keep their airways open. If someone's lying on their back and perhaps you know they've had a seizure or they've had a bang on the head and they, there is a chance that they could vomit, um, you know, or, or other fluids could be coming up through their sort of airways. Um, if someone's lying on their back, then that is a risk. Um, so the idea is if you can get someone into the recovery position on their side, then you're opening up the airways, you're clearing um, the airways, which is a much safer position for a casualty to be in. Okay, thank you. I've recorded all of your responses there. Question four is when should you not put a casualty in the recovery position? So when should you not put a casualty in the recovery position? Okay, um, well obviously if a casualty wasn't breathing, then you're going to go straight into your sort of CPR, um, so not going to be doing a recovery position in that situation. If they are breathing and you move on to the secondary assessment, because obviously you're looking to get them into the recovery, it would be if you came across a serious injury. So this could be like a compound fracture or a, um, you know, some sort of puncture wound or something. Some, some reason where you look at that injury and you think, I don't think I'm comfortable, or head or spinal injuries in particular. Um, you know, you don't. You, if you're thinking you could be making the situation worse by moving them, considering things such as sort of par par paralyzing them, if, if if that was to be the case, then obviously that's what you're checking for with that secondary assessment. Okay, thank you for those examples. Uh, question five is: uh, What are the symptoms of a seizure? Um, 
So the symptoms of a seizure, um, normally someone will, um, you know, actually collapse, pass out, go unconscious, um, and then you're going to get, I guess, I can't really call that the, the, the stage, is when an actual casualty is physically shaking or, or having convulsions. Um, so quite quite a nasty thing to see, quite an obvious thing if you see someone having sort of involuntary contractions, um, sort of normally on the floor. Um, and there is also a chance that people can lose sort of bodily control when they have a seizure, so that could be whether it be sickness or even um, sort of bladder or, or bowel uh, movement. So there's, there's signs to actually look out for when looking at seizures. Okay, thank you. And final question, what is the treatment for a seizure? Um, one, of the, one of the important things is, is not to try and restrict someone having a seizure, to actually you know, try and stop the movements that can actually cause further harm. So really, Unfortunately, you sort of have to let the seizure and the convulsions run its course, but you can obviously make the area around them as safe as possible. So that could be getting maybe cushions or, or blankets around them if it was a hard floor, um, and, you know, and, and it was quite a sort of violent seizure. And you can also sort of come behind their head and almost sort of not, not restrict it, but support it, maybe have like a cushion under it if, if you were concerned they were going to, you know, get, get injuries from the actual seizure um, and then obviously once once the seizure stops that's when you can come in and consider checking the vital signs and, and, and recovery position and that okay thank you um, I've written down all of your responses okay thank you for that um, the next step is for me to uh, review all of your answers uh, once again I'm going to be using the the FAIB uh, standards in order to mark your your responses now okay um, do feel free to have a, a comfort break and we will progress on to the next element of the course we're going to look at bleeds this afternoon if you want to have a, a break uh, please feel free to read the, the first aid handbook to prepare yourself for the afternoon session as well um, do you have any questions no, 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 that's all good, yes, yeah, so I look forward to uh, I'll seeing my results and that later on. Of course. I've still, uh, got, to do the, I've still got to do the written test paper, haven't I? That's correct, okay. Yeah. Um, but just to reiterate, I will mark uh, your your responses um, and I'll give you my, my feedback after the break. Um, so if you don't have any further questions, feel, f uh, feel free to go and if you could just let the next uh, learner in. Uh, for the uh, questions to take place. Okay, thanks, thanks very much. Thanks very much, Tom. Cheers. Thank you.